Thank you. Uh, so how many of you would love to be Megan Klingenberg? Look at that, Meg! I like it too. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here's the thing. I met Meg in 2008 uh, when she was on the U20 Women's National Team, and that was the same height. You were in the same height, yes. Yep. And um, you may have been a little taller, actually. That's rude. Yeah. <laughs> and this is the same team that Sydney LaRue and Alex Morgan were on and all this. And I'll never forget, we had gotten, we had just won, I think, against Germany or England or one of those teams. And I got on the bus, and Pia, who was the full team, national team coach at the time, said to me, if you were going to start a team from any player on this bus, who would you pick and why? And without hesitation, I'm not making this up, I said Meg, hands down. And so everyone wants to know, how do I become Megan Klingenberg? Well, the reason I picked Meg, uh, really one of the main reasons was her motivation and her commitment, and that ties into her fight and her grit and her mental toughness, and we'll talk about that component. Another component, as Dr. Matt was saying, is genetics, and the other is parents. So if you all want to know, how do we get, how do we create this? Well, first, a lot of it is out of your control. I can give you the tools in this room to help you all reach your excellence, but I can't tell any parents in here that you're going to be able to create the next All-American at UNC and go on and be on the national team. That doesn't mean I don't want you to dream, but there's some components. The first thing is genetics. Some of you are going to be limited thanks to your parents. You can thank them. I love, I played soccer, college soccer, and I love my parents, but they didn't give me one fast twitch muscle fiber between them. <laughs> Not one. Fast, no, wasn't in my vocabulary. Loved them, I got faster because I was willing to put the work in, so I eventually did get faster, but fast, no, no. Okay, so some of this is genetics, but just know that if you do put the work in, you work with folks like Dr. Matt, that you can get to your excellence. But notice how I'm saying your excellence. I don't even know what that looks like. None of us do. The second thing is parents. Oh, parents. Kids, this is where you can like totally call your parents out and I will protect you, I promise. How many of you have a car ride home that you are dissecting the game? Oh, there's hands going up, parents, all over the room. Look at this. You are their parents, not their coach. You're paying these great coaches to coach, and then you get in the car and you get rid of all the good coaching that they've just done because you are armchair quarterbacks and coaches. You're my dad. Why do you think I do what I do? My dad jacked me up. I love him. <laughs> but I'm a hot, ever-loving mess. He still sits in the chair and Serena Williams will be on, or Meg will be on TV and be, why did Megan kick it out of bounds? I don't understand. It's 120 yards that direction. How can't you keep it in play? Yes, Dad, because it's that easy, because you've ever touched the ball at that level before. <laughs> oh, yeah, see, the kids know. They are totally calling you out and looking at you right now. That's a problem. God love you parents. Parenting is hard enough today with all the technology kind of stuff that you're trying to manage, what do we allow our kids to do, what do we don't want to allow them to do, this whole myth of the college scholarship, and Susie over here, I heard, got a full ride, which she probably didn't, she probably got $200 for books, but no one goes around and says, my kid got $200 for books, they say they got a scholarship, and then you all believe that your daughter deserves a scholarship and is gonna get one, and I'm like, you have no idea. Anson like, takes like his scholarships and pieces them out, right? Like. You might get 10%. Yeah, we said $200 for books the first year. There we go, 200. Here's Miss All American over here, and she gets $200 for books her first year. But she was on scholarship, everybody. And two, not knocking 200 bucks, but when the education is like 60 grand a year nowadays, like that's not really going to cover a lot. You have a better chance of actually getting an academic scholarship than you do an athletic scholarship. Do you hear that, kiddos? Like, smarts. Just like what the doc was saying, up here, you need this for school. So my thing is, is like, parents, I love you. I know you're investing. I don't even know how you do it. You're driving your kids all around, your whole weekends, you're already working 40, 60 hours a week, and then you're carpooling your kids all around, and you feel really invested. And oh, by the way, all your savings is going to carting your kids around to play soccer. I get it. I got it. I know it's an investment, but if you're investing for what? 
Are you investing for the college scholarship? Because that's a bad investment. No, no, bad, bad, bad investment. What are you investing? Are you hoping that soccer develops life skills, that it keeps them healthy, that they can make friends, that they can do all that? Then great, then stop acting like lunatics. On the sideline, in the car. I'm not telling you not to parent. I would love if parents parented. That would be phenomenal. So if your kid has bad body language, go at it. Because if they have bad body language, when they walk into their boss's office down the road, they're gonna get fired. If they're not giving 100% of what they can give that day, so if they're sick, they're coming back from an injury, my expectation is give me 100 of whatever you got that day. If they're not doing that, then don't pay for them to be on the elite teams. They can go play rec soccer. They're showing you, based on their work ethic, whether or not they want to play at that level or not. But then you keep, they're like, I don't understand. I don't know why Susie's not doing, I, I just, I'm like, she's showing you based on her behavior that this is not what she wants. I'm not saying, like, do you, you understand this? But then who are they really playing soccer for? So I'm letting like, tell them, let the coaches coach. And you, and then you all are like, well, what do we do? On the way home? I don't know, ask your kids where they want to go to eat or something, I don't know. The other thing you can knock them on is their attitude. If they have a bad attitude, they respond to failure in a bad way, have that conversation, because that's life skill stuff. I'm a big, if it doesn't, if it's not gonna work when they get big, older, then it shouldn't work on the soccer field. I do that, I also am a college professor. You wanna see hot messes? 80% of students when they graduate, and by the way, they're averaging now six years to graduate from undergrad, because they keep changing their majors over and over and over, they move back in with you. 80% of kids are moving back in with their parents at 22, 23, 24 years of age. I love this. Yeah, you're all talk. I see that the, the thumbs going like this, please. And if you're the parent that says, what's wrong with that? I can't wait for them to move back in. They're not your friends. They're your kids. If you're really parent, and some of you are gonna love this, if you're doing a good job parenting, your kids don't like you. I love when you're like, Tiff, I'm really worried my kid doesn't like me. I'm like, thank you, you're doing parenting. If they love you and say you're their best friend right now, we're in trouble. I tell college coaches, if a kid ever comes to you and says, my parents are my best friends as adolescents, run away. So, parenting gang, I'll talk, oh, I get you tomorrow. You all think you're gonna walk over and watch your daughter play. No, kids, players, you get to go be with Meg. Yeah, right? You get to go and be with Meg and I get your parents. And I, oh, do you see how happy they are? That's a problem! All right, so there's parenting. Now here's the last thing. So we talked genetics, we talked parenting, and let me tell you, Meg's parents, ooh, tough as nails. But you'll know where she gets her genetics from. I was up there at the World Cup and there's a picture of us. I think I'm taller than your dad. Hey, he's tiny. Yeah, and her mom. They're tiny, right? So there's no doubt that, that you're their kid, right? But what you don't know about is that her dad was a state champion in cross country and her mom was this flat out stud in softball. So even though she's kind of tiny, She's still a genetic freak in nature. Now here's the thing though, it's not just genetics, because there's lots of people who are genetic freaks in nature who don't amount to anything. We always say, man, if I could take that heart and rip it out of your chest and put it in that person's body, I'd have the ultimate athlete. Because the last component gang, and you can't control this, is motivation and commitment. Motivation is that love for the game. It doesn't mean you always like the game. In fact, if you're doing it right, you don't like the game a lot sometimes because it's hard, it's frustrating, you look silly sometimes when you're trying something new, and you're like, wanna give up all the time. And as girls, girls can be mean. So now you're dealing with girls on top of it who are not really nice all the time. Right? Sometimes not so nice. You don't want to try things because you don't want to look too good because you're worried someone's going to make fun of you because you're trying too hard. And so there's a lot going on. And so you want to give up, but you got to love it. you got to love the game. But it's not just enough to love it. Because when it does get tough, the love is that passion and the attitude. 
But what I want to know, and what she had, and you can see it a mile away, is commitment. You gotta fight. You have gotta do hard things and make behavioral changes. So if it's raining outside and you know you gotta go train, no one wants to go out if it's cold and rainy. Not that you all know what cold is, but you don't want to go out if it's cold and rainy. She was out of Pittsburgh in cold rain, snow, outside by herself, no one forcing her. Her parents weren't forcing her, and she was outside training because she loved it and she wanted to get better. But she didn't want to be cold. <laughs> like she wasn't, woo, zero degree weather, I can't wait to go out and not keep my toes. But she was like, I need to go because if I don't go, someone else is out there getting better, and I want to get better. But parents, her parents, did not make her go out and train on her own. Trust me, they didn't have time for that. They wanted to know, they knew every day that this is what she wanted to do because she was outside doing it by herself. No one watching. And it's that commitment to anything, whether it's soccer, to school, to art, to drama, to anything that you are truly passionate about, that's how I know if you're gonna reach your excellence or not, because not only are you motivated and passionate, but you are committed and willing to put the work in and fight through when things get really tough, and it sucks. Parents, these are the conversations you can help with your kids. When they come home and they're crying and they had a lousy practice, it's not, man, we gotta go find you a new team. Your coach sucks. It's like, honey, life sucks. It's hard. Now what are you gonna do? Your decision, you could be sad for a little bit because you're hard and you, and you failed. And now what? Because gang, guys, you're gonna fail a whole heck of a lot tomorrow. If you're playing on your edge of your ability tomorrow and really trying, you're gonna, she's gonna show you some really hard stuff that you've never done before and you're gonna look silly doing, but here's the thing, you're all gonna look silly doing it. And that's okay. And all she cares about is you're gonna give 100% and give energy. And if you do that, we're amped and excited and she's gonna be excited and you're going to get better. When you walk out of practice and you say, oh my gosh, that was terrible. You got better. If you walk out of practice and you're like, eh, that was easy. You didn't get better. Make sense? So the three things to really think about genetics and blame your parents when you get back in the car. Parents can't control your parents, but I got them tomorrow, don't worry. I got them. I got your backs. And then motivation and commitment. Make sense? And so we'll talk. You'll have more sessions, kiddos, with me tomorrow too. Okay, players, you'll have some stuff you get to do with me, so we'll do some fun stuff as well. But I get your parents in the morning, okay? Now, I know what you really are waiting for. I know, I know. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going.